Hello everyone, and welcome back to another GIS mathematics lecture video. And in this video, I want to sort of tie together everything we've talked about by addressing the following example. Is the line that passes through the points 1, 1, and 3, 3 perpendicular, parallel, or neither to the line that passes through the points 6, 4, and 7, 5? And I want to begin by, as I always recommend, drawing out what you have, drawing out the information you have. So we have the point 1, 1, and we have the point 3, 3, and this is going to form a line, one line. And then we have, in a different color here, we have the point 6, 4, and we have the point 7, 5. And these are going to form some line. So the question becomes, are these two lines parallel? Well, given the information we have visually, we might make an educated guess, and the educated guess might very well be correct. But let's skip educated guesses, and let's go through the math and figure out how we would actually go about solving this problem. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to convert these two, two sets of two points into actual equations. Right? And so what we can do quickly, and again, if any of this seems confusing, I encourage you to go back and rewatch the videos where we solved for line equations given points. So we can do m1 is equal to the point is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And in this case, for the point, the first point we're talking about, we have 1, 1, and 3, 3. So we will do 3 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. And that's going to be equal to 2 over 2, which is going to be equal to 1. So that's m1. For b1, right, if you remember, we rearranged that the original equation to be equal to b equals negative mx plus y. And again, if you're, let me clean that up a bit. Again, if you're confused as to how we're jumping right into this negative mx plus y business, I encourage you to go back and rewatch the two points video where we actually derived this equation. Same thing with this up here. So if any of this is, is unfamiliar to you, please go back and watch the other videos. So in this equation, we have, we'll take the point one, one, because I think that's going to be easier. We have negative one, times 1 plus 1 is going to be equal to negative 1 plus 1 is going to be equal to 0. So our blue line here has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0, which makes sense. If we extended the line out, we would hit 0 at the point 0. And you can see that if we go over 1 in the x, we also go up 1 in the y. So this makes sense. So our Equation 1 is going to be y equals 1x plus 0. Okay, so let's look at our second equation, right? The line that passes through the points 6, 4, and 7, 5. So that's this line here. You know, actually, I'm going to do it in red just so that we keep things, keep things different. Right, m2 is going to be equal to, if we're going to do the exact same thing, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, these are coming from the points we already have. So our y2 is 5, our y1 is 4, our x2 is 7, and our x1 is 6. Oh, that's a 4, not a 1. That's a 4, not a 1. So 5 minus 4 is 1. 7 minus 6 is also 1. So in this case, we have 1 over 1, which is going to be equal to 1. Now, I will say to 
actually address this particular question, you could stop here because all we would need to do is compare the slopes. But I think it's a good exercise to go through the, the entire process. So if we go B2, right, it's going to be equal to, again, B equals that negative mx plus y. And in this case, we'll use the point 6, 4. So we're going to have negative 1 times 6 plus 4. That's going to be equal to negative 6 plus 4, and that's going to be equal to negative 2. Now, it's a little more difficult in this case because it's so kind of far away, but you could imagine if you were to extend this line here, it would hit at y equals negative 2. So this also appears to check out with our graph. So this equation would be y equals 1x minus 2. So now we have the equations. How do we then go back and address this question here? whether they're perpendicular, parallel, or neither. And I wrote them in this order because I want us to look at them in this order so that we actually go through the process of looking at each possible scenario. So what would it mean for these two lines to be perpendicular? Well, if you remember back to our video on perpendicular lines, we said that for two lines to be perpendicular, right, their slopes had to be negative inverses of each other such that if you multiply them together, you get negative 1. So let's just sort of clarify. We have our m2 is equal to 1, and then we'll bring down our m1 is equal to 1. So what we're proposing is if perpendicular, so for perpendicular, right, we would say that m1 times m2 would be equal to negative 1. Well, let's check if that works. Right? Does 1 times 1 equal negative 1? Well, no, it does not. Right? 1 times 1 is equal to positive 1, not negative 1. So because this equation, this, this uh, equality doesn't work, right? 1 is not equal to negative 1, then these two lines can't be perpendicular. Right? I'm going to use a different color here. Right, these two lines can't be perpendicular. Because if they were perpendicular, then this would have to be true. So we know the lines aren't perpendicular. OK? Well, what about parallel? Well, for them to be parallel, let's slide over just a little eensy weensy bit. Right. For them to be parallel, Right. What does parallel mean? Well, if you remember back to our video on parallel lines, we said that in order for a line for two lines to be parallel, their slopes have to be equal. So what does that mean sort of in broad terms? Right? That would mean that m1 would have to be equal to m2. Right? So let's look at our actual values here. Does 1 equal 1? It does. This is right. So what we're saying here is that in this case, they are, in fact, parallel. Right? These two lines are, in fact, parallel because their slopes are equal. So let's just take an imagination where the slopes weren't equal and they weren't equal to negative 1. That would mean that they are neither perpendicular nor parallel. Okay, let's let that sink in. If the slopes aren't equal and they're not negative inverses of each other, then that means they're neither perpendicular nor parallel. And what that means is that means that at some point they will intersect, but they will not intersect at a 90 degree angle. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to repeat it one more time. If the lines are neither perp, if, if this isn't true, right, if they're not negative inverses of each other, and if this isn't true, that their slopes aren't equal, then they're neither perpendicular nor parallel, which means that at some point they will intersect, but it will not be at a 90 degree angle. 
Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you were able to follow along through all the different steps. If any part of this was confusing, I would strongly encourage you to pause the video, go back, rewatch the part you're confused about, and as always, please reach out. Thank you.